let's look at 2022. They had a low price of $69.29, but it was a high price of $160.59. So for that year, this stock moved up 131.77%. Hey guys, the stock we're going to analyze today is Liberty Broadband Corporation. And you know I break my stocks down into three tiers on my watch list, three stars, which is the most fundamentally sound, two stars, which are beneath that, and one star, which is the least fundamentally sound, but still fundamentally sound enough to make the watch list. Well, if you notice, I don't have any stars on Liberty Broadband. Um, they're not on my watch list, but I do find them intriguing. So although they're not on my watch list, does that mean I'm not going to watch them? No, it does not. I'm going to watch them. Does that mean I would not buy them? Under the right circumstances, I may buy them. And as we move further into this analysis, I will explain why, and I will explain the red flag that I see with them so that you guys can make your own decision. But before we jump into the analysis, I just want to mention two things. Those who are familiar with the channel, you know that I put out a this week's stock winners every week which shows you the um, fundamentally sound stocks on the watch list that are starting to move up. So you may want to tune into that and keep an eye out for that, as well as this week's option picks, where every week I pick one of those stocks in this week's stock winners, that's moving up, or maybe it's more, but usually one, and we pick that as an option pick, or I pick that as an option pick, and actually purchase it so that you can see its progress as it moves up. In any event, having said that, let's jump into this analysis for this stock. So we have Liberty Broadband Corporation. The ticker symbol is LBRDA. Now, this company, if we look at their earnings per share, the, the 2023 figures are not out yet. But if we look at their earnings per share for those five previous years, it was 38 cents in 2018. 64 cents in 2019. 2020, it jumped. $2.17. 2021, $3.93. So moving up nicely. 2022, $7.96. So it really moved up. Not sure what happened in 2023. Don't have those figures. But in the current earnings per share right now, $4.55, $4.55. So it's down from the $7.96 that it was up to in 2022. Not sure what the cause of that was but just bringing it to you guys' attention. So, let's look at the high and the low prices. In 2018, this stock had a low price of $68.27, a high price of $96.16. That was a 40.85% increase. Now, in 2019, they had a low price of $72.69 and a high price 
of $124.56. That was an increase to, through the year of 71.36%. In 2020, we know COVID lockdowns, they had a low price of $87.38 and a high price of $161.83. That was an increase of 85.20% during the year. 2021, their low price was $140.47. Their high price was $187.10. That was an increase of 33.20% during the year. Not great, but 2019 and 20 were okay. But let's look at 2022. They had a low price of 69.2%. $69.29. So they dropped. It was 60, 70, 80, 140. Then it dropped back down to 60. Low price of $69.29. But it was a high price of $160.59. So for that year, this stock moved up. 131.77%. And we see, we don't know what the low price was last year, but we're back in that $60 range, $65.07. So, let's look at the high and the low PEs. Because that's what's going to give us an idea of what this stock can move up to. And we see the low PEs for 2018 and 2019 were crazy. 2018, it was 179.66. And 2019, it was 113.58. Now, it snapped back down more so to reality in 2020. 2020 it was 40.27, still pretty high. But 2021 it was 35.74 and 2022 it was 8.70. And now it's at 14.30. So I'm not even going to count 2018 and 19 because the differences were crazy. In 2020, between the low PE and the high PE was 34. Not counting the decimals on the end. I'm just counting before that to make it simpler. But in 2021, between the low and the high, it was 12. And in 2022, between the low and the high, it was 12. So having said that, I'm going to look at what this stock could potentially move up to. Now, Yahoo has already given their analysis. And that is that this stock is currently at $65.07 a share. $65.07 a share. Yahoo analysts estimate it can move up to $115.47 in the next 12 months. But I'm going to do my own estimate based on PE. And if I take the current PE, meaning if this was the lowest PE of this stock, and it started to move up from here. Let's say it moved up by 12 like it did these previous two years. We could say 14.30 plus 12, 26.3 times the current earnings per share, 
equals. So my estimate falls along the lines of theirs. Yahoo's estimate was 115.47. My estimate was or is 119.66. But now let's say things go a little wrong and they continue to drop. What is an estimate of how low I feel this stock could drop? Well, in the five year history we have here, the lowest PE that it was at was 8.70. So let's calculate that. 8.70 times the earnings per share, 4.55 equals $39.58. So let's say that this stock continued to drop and it dropped to the low PE that it was at in 2022, we could see it drop into $39.55 if this earnings per share stays consistent. In any event, that's it for where we feel the stock could go as far as moving up or moving down. Now let's take a look at the fundamentals for this stock. And if we look at the fundamentals for this stock, and this is a bit of an anomaly. I don't see this very often looking at income statements, but I'm gonna point out something that I see. In 2018, this company made $22,256,000 in overall sales and revenue. However, if we look at the net income line, which is usually just the um, how much money is left over after paying all expenses, in this case, this company is collecting some type of non-operating income. And they collected that non-operating income for all five years that we have in this analysis. So they made $22,256,000 in overall sales and revenue but they also made 69,953,000 from non-operating income. In 2019, they made 15 million in sales and revenue, but they also made 117 million in non-operating income. In 2020, they made 51 million in sales and revenue, increasing because 2019 and dropped, but 2020 it increased. But they also made 398 million in non operating income. Now, in 2021, they made 988 million. In sales and revenue, it really jumped up. And they made $732 million in non operating income. Still significant, but finally, their sales and revenue was above the non operating income. But in 2022, it went back to the old way. 975 million in sales and revenue, 1 billion 257 million in non operating income. So, not only do they have money coming in from sales and revenue for this company, but they have other 
non-operating income, I'm not sure if it's investments or whatever, out there that's also bringing in money. When we jump to their return on equity, notice it's slow these first few years, and that may be related to the non-operating income. It was 0 0.66 in 2018, 1.10% 1 in 2019, increasing a little 2.94% in 2020, but in 2021, it was 7.22%, and in 2022, it got a little better. 14.79%. And the reason I feel that may have happened is because if we go back to the income statement, we see that the income, the sales and revenue dramatically increased in 2021 and 2022, which I feel may have led to the higher return on equity in 2021 and 2022, up to 7.22% then 14.79%. 14.79 is definitely more acceptable. Now, if we look at their debt to equity, 14.15% in 2018, spectacular. 14.89% in 2019, spectacular. From 2020 and above, it started to grow a little, but still pretty, really decent. 58.14% in 2020, 67.35% in 2021, and 78.12% in 2022. So they're taking on more debt, but possibly for business purposes. So let's look at their balance sheet, which should be pretty decent. The only things I see of concern on their balance sheet is in 2021 and 2022, the current liabilities did exceed the current assets. However, the debt to equity is fine, so I don't see that as a major concern. Now, the total assets, they blew away the um, total liabilities. The total assets exceeded the total liabilities. In other words, there will be enough money for them to survive for years based on this balance sheet. Gets a little tighter in 22 and 2021. But 2018 and 2019 were spectacular. 2020 was good as well. 2021 and 22 got a little tighter, but it's still very good and it's still exceeding by at least double. This company does not give a dividend, and we'll see why in a little while. In terms of their stock, there was no change for 2018 and 2019. But in 2020, 21, and 22, they bought back more of their own stock, which we always love to see. Now, the area of concern that I see with this company is the free cash flow. Like we said, their income statement looked good. But the free cash flow shows us what's going out of a company, what they're paying for, 
and what's coming into a company, what money is coming in. This company's free cash flow was negative all five years. 2018, negative 26,301,000. 2019, negative 38 million. 2020, negative 98 million. 2021, negative 131 million. And 2022, negative 237 million. So, which, and for that reason, they're not giving a dividend, which makes sense. But why are they negative cash flow all five years? So based on that, I would not give this company a one star, a two star, a three star. Does that mean I wouldn't buy it? Under the right circumstances, if I see it moving up and I see where my analysis says the price can go and I see what Yahoo's analysis says the price will go, I could consider buying it. I would hold it tentatively. I would watch it carefully. But I would consider buying it under the right circumstances. But this free cash flow is a real red flag. In any event, if we jump down to the statistics, this company has a beta of 1.03, meaning it moves about like the market. Outstanding shares, that's another interesting thing. Outstanding shares is how many shares of stock this company has out, period. Whereas float is the amount of shares that are available to the general public. So float is generally or usually a lower number than the outstanding shares. In this case, Yahoo has float as a much larger number from outstanding shares. Maybe there's a logical explanation, I just don't understand it. So in any event, there are 18.23 million outstanding shares of this stock. But Yahoo says the float is 125.13 million. I'm a little confused at that. The shares that are held by insiders, those who work in the company or are part of the company, 9.72%. That's a very large number because that means 9.72% of 18.23 million shares are owned by people working in the company. And that would mean that those people probably have confidence in the company. 80.03% is owned by institutions, large banks, and so forth. In any event, the book value of this company is 61.40. It's almost near the share price. And Gregory B. Maffei, born 1960, so you have an idea of his age, is the CEO, president, and director. He serves as the CEO of Liberty Broadband and other companies. Now, Liberty Broadband Corp. is the telecom is in the telecom services industry and communication services sector. So that's my analysis for Liberty Broadband, guys. 
Have a great day, and I look forward to speaking to you in the next video.